to Tel Aviv now where we're joined by Israeli-American journalist Emily Schrader. Now, Emily, what has happened in Tel Aviv where you are? I understand there were rockets that landed right outside your house. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, that is true. The, there have been several barrages of rockets that did reach into central Israel, uh, including one that actually landed right outside my house, the same block. Um, that was a new experience for me, although I've been here through several wars. And even just a couple of hours ago, there was another siren in Tel Aviv. So this is a very real and ongoing threat. Um, the attack that occurred with the rocket that hit outside my house, I think three people were injured in that. Um, moderately, they seem to be uh, okay for now, but we haven't gotten a lot of updates because there's so much going on. Um, but I will say it's a, it's a very unsettling experience, everything that we've been through. It's um, extremely traumatic in the entire country. Well, in a bustling city too, where you are, where everything's always open, it must feel quite scary as well with presumably not a lot of people on the streets. People are indoors, I, I, I presume. Most shops, schools, cafes are closed right now. Yes, yeah, so since this operation started, pretty much everything has been shut down in Tel Aviv. And Tel Aviv is a very 24-7 city. Things are always open. People are always outside, especially now the weather is nice. But if you walk outside, you wouldn't know it because almost everything is closed. Uh, people aren't going to school. There's not people in the streets. It's very, very scary. And in fact, I mentioned the rocket that hit outside my house. When I went down to see what had happened after the siren stopped and we heard all the booms, the the entire neighborhood smelled of gunpowder, not just by the rocket, but the entire area. And when I walked closer to it, along with a couple of other people who had ventured out of shelters to see what was going on, another siren went off. So everybody had to run back to shelters for another barrage of rockets. So it's just constant terrorism and the whole country is feeling it. What has been the reaction of those you've encountered and, and how the attacks have impacted people's morale? I mean, I think there's a lot of confusion now. At this point, we don't even know what the final, you know, casualty for the number of people who died are. Uh, we know that there's over 2,200 injured, uh, that I think now the count is that over 700 have been killed. And we also don't know the exact number of hostages. It's somewhere over 100. I think that's probably one of the most shocking things for the Israeli public is the idea that we have, you know, 100 plus Israeli citizens or people who are living in Israel as well, some of them international, uh, who are being held by an internationally designated terrorist organization in a campaign of terrorism where they slaughtered all of these people. What efforts are underway to have these people brought home safely? Do you know? Is negotiation an option right now? So the Israeli government hasn't stated explicitly what their approach is going to be, other than I know that the state of Israel did reach out to Egypt to see if they could pressure uh, Hamas to release or have some sort of negotiation that really remains to be seen. There's a lot of unanswered questions right now. And I think right now our priority as a country uh, is to ensure that there is no further loss of life on the Israeli side. And that's what Israel is, is focused on for the time being. Well, Emily, the pictures from the music festival that came under attack are harrowing, extremely disturbing, in fact, and the death toll uh, as it stands is 260. Do we know if this event was specifically targeted or what more uh, have we found out? We don't know if this event specifically was targeted. What we do know is this day was targeted. It's the anniversary of the Yom Kippur War in 1973, which was also a surprise attack. That was done intentionally. In addition to that, it was a Jewish holiday. So a lot of the people who are more religious uh, were in synagogues or, or at home, not actually at festivals. That being said, it speaks to the true intent of this campaign. This isn't about Palestinian rights. It isn't about a Palestinian state. There isn't a strategic military objective to this operation. What makes it unique is that the terrorists came into Israel and slaughtered innocent civilians. They weren't targeting military bases. They were targeting innocent civilians who were standing at bus stops, who were driving in their cars, who were at a music festival. And that's part of what makes this entire situation so appalling. Uh, the, the complete disregard for human life. I have friends who live in the South, one of their communities. They had the terrorists come in. And she mentioned just a few
few minutes ago to me after getting you know to a secure location in Tel Aviv that they murdered all of her neighbors uh, sometimes in front of the families they murdered the animals as well they shot dogs in the neighborhood it's just an absolute horror show what's happening now so much so that it's difficult to even believe some of the own footage that's happening right in front of us uh, going back to that rocket that landed outside your house uh, was anyone hurt was anyone injured you've been there covering other wars but this really has been the worst you've witnessed Absolutely. This is absolutely the worst I've witnessed in terms of terrorist attacks, whether it's a series of them or one individually, uh, or wars. The operation in 2021 was also very difficult, but this is a different level. This is really unlike anything we've ever seen before. Uh, in the attack in Tel Aviv, there were uh, three people that were injured. One of them was actually trapped under the building, which collapsed. I don't know what the end result of that was. We haven't gotten updates on the status of a lot of the people who have been injured at this point. As I said, at this point, we don't even know how many how many casualties there are total from everything that's happened. And even as we speak, I know that the is still fighting some of the Hamas terrorists in specific uh, towns. Only a few of them, they've cleared out most of them, but they are still engaging in uh, in, in action with them. Well, Emily Schrader, really good to get your insights. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.